Time now for Money Matters, where we talk about some of the biggest stories impacting your wallet this week. I'm Jonathan Martin. Well, some new numbers show living with a partner can save you a lot of money. A study from Zillow shows single people are paying more for rent than couples or people with roommates. They're calling it the singles tax. So on average, single people will pay just over $7,000 to live alone, while couples save over $14,000 a year by living together. Well, here in Atlanta, the so-called singles tax is $9,000, where the couple's discount is just under 18,000 bucks. We are entering spring's peak home buying and selling season when home sales start ticking up in March and April, and it's usually a result of people starting to make their moves now. Reporter Ivan Rodriguez breaks down what you need to know if you're planning to buy or sell a home this year. The home buying season is already upon us, and experts say if you're in the market, don't wait around too long for better prices or rates. It's always a difficult call in terms of timing as a consumer just be on the lookout. If a right home within the right budget shows up, maybe go for it. Mortgage rates are down from their highs last fall, hovering around 6.6% since December, resulting in less uncertainty and improving affordability for home buyers. In fact, homeowner optimism is at its highest level since March of 2022, according to a survey by Fannie Mae. This year, more inventory will be showing on the market. That's definitely good for consumers seeing more choices. If you're planning to buy this spring, experts suggest building a home buying team consisting of an agent, lender, and even a title company because each part is crucial in what can be a complicated multi-month process. The home buying process is not a simple decision. Agents also advise people to search for homes knowing what their conservative monthly payment is, making it easier to move other variables like price, location, or condition of a house in order to have the best chances to buy the home. The key, experts say, is be flexible and have your financial house ready to go. You want to show that you have the financial capacity and getting that mortgage approved letter uh, certainly demonstrates the financial capacity to uh, make the move. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. A new report found people could save more money per month if they raise their credit score. According to a new lending tree study, people could save an extra $92 a month if their score increased to very good, which is between 740 and 799. So that translates to $22,000 over the life of their credit and loans. The report says people found savings through lower interest rates, fees and car insurance rates. As we approach the end of winter, we're getting ready for the busy spring and summer travel seasons ahead. And you might notice as you fill up your car that gas prices are quickly rising. Reporter Gloria Pasmino explains why this is happening. If you feel like you're paying more to fill up your car lately, you're not imagining it. Gas prices have begun their annual seasonal increase as winter winds down. We tend to see it right around Valentine's Day, President's Day. That's really when gas prices tend to start rising more noticeably. Patrick DeHaan is head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, and he says this is the time of year that Americans start to see that rise at the pump and feel a pinch in their wallets. Refineries start doing maintenance to prepare for the summer driving season. That maintenance sees shutdowns less gasoline being produced and also a switch over to summer gasoline, which will start here in just a week or two across much of the country. According to AAA, the national average for gas is $3.28 a gallon, up 11 cents in the last week alone. For now, DeHaan says that's well within the normal range of about 35 to 85 cents a gallon from winter to spring peak, which tops out around Memorial Day weekend. But refinery outages due to cold weather and electrical issues in the last several weeks could push prices up even higher. But here's some good news. There are lots of ways to save at the pump. A lot of stations have loyalty programs that now that will give you a discount just for putting in your information. There can be credit cards with rebates and rewards for using uh, their card at a, a, a pump. Uh, even Gas Buddy has a pay with Gas Buddy card that links to a checking account that can save you up to 25 cents a gallon. So if you combine all of those, really nobody should be paying what that retail price says. 
People with student loan payments have less saved up for retirement than those without. That's according to a study from the Employee Benefit Research Institute. Now, the study examined the retirement saving uh, and the habits of more than 50,000 people between 2017 and 2019. It found while a higher salary tends to mean higher 401k balances and contribution rates, it doesn't close the gap between those making student loan payments and those who are not. Employees with student loan payments who earn at least $50,000 $55,000 a year have 36% lower 401k balances than those without payments. Meanwhile, data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows more than half of workers in the U.S. don't have a four-year degree, and some big companies say they are now changing to a skills-based hiring practice. But that doesn't mean those workers are actually getting the jobs. The Burning Glass Institute and Harvard Business School looked at more than 1,100 companies and if they hire people without higher education. Only 37% of the firms they analyzed made tangible changes in their hiring practices. So that includes Walmart, Apple, Target, and General Motors. 45% of the sample removed degree requirements from their job postings, but showed little change in actual hiring patterns. Companies in this group include Amazon, Kroger, and Bank of America. Raising money for a business can be a huge challenge, especially for women and people of color. Reporter Sharon Epperson spoke with two black business owners about their experience. Disappointed with the local dating scene in Washington, Nasa Shelley, an attorney, saw an opportunity. When I looked for a matchmaking service, I looked for a dating app. And I couldn't find anything that catered to professional black women. In 2018, she founded Carpe Diem, a dating app and matchmaking service. To fund the business, she sold her condo, drained her savings, and raised money from friends and family. The growth and revenue potential is massive. As the business has grown, Shelley has raised nearly $2 million and, and continues to make her case to investors for funding to enhance marketing, hire more matchmakers, and expand into other cities. I can't understate the value of getting capital into the hands of minorities and especially women of color to help them fuel their businesses. I think there's a unique drive for success because of a lack of resources and the necessity to drive optimal outcomes with less support and less capital. Matching investors with opportunity prompted Jason Ray to start his own wealth management firm based in Philadelphia in 2019. Many of his clients invest in early stage businesses. The first thing people should think about is how it frames into their investment policy or financial plan and why they're investing in startups. If clients want to invest, he advises they know how the company operates and its competitive advantage, evaluate the management team and its track record, and most importantly, understand the terms of the investment. If the valuation on the company is too high and you as an investor are not getting enough rights or ownership or control or whatever it may be, that may not be the right deal for you, even if the management team and the company has great competitive um, advantages. Carpe Diem seized the moment and now has a revenue generating business. We have customers, we have members. It makes it a little bit easier coming to the table and advocating for additional funding from investors. Investors who add value with money and advice to help grow the business. For CNBC, I'm Sharon Epperson.